Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I hope you're having a super awesome day. I'm fired up, I'm in Luminar 4, I'm having a great old time. Because once again, I'm playing with Iceland photos and in fact, I'm playing with a photo from the same place as what I did in the last video, which you can catch there if you'd like to. But um, this video is gonna be a little bit different and that is, I, I do a lot of workflow videos and deep dives and things like that where I dive into components of Luminar 4, or I do creative workflow and advanced things where I feel like I do a lot of different things that may be kind of advanced for people. And while many of you have been watching my Illuminar videos for a long time, and thank you for that, I really do appreciate it. There's also a lot of people that are new to the channel who haven't been using Luminar 4 for very long. And in fact, um, I, I can tell this for two reasons. Number one, um, some of my early videos about Luminar 4 in my, in my tutorial series, like how to get started with Luminar 4 and things like that, still get a lot of views every week. So that means new people are coming in and checking these things out, which is awesome. I want the universe of Luminar users to continue to expand. Um, but also I get a lot of questions from people that say, well, how do you do this or how do you do that? And they're not uh, advanced questions, which is totally cool, right? We're all friends here. There's no, like, there's no snobbery around anything we do. We're all just creative people having fun, trying to make better pictures. And all I wanna do is try to share what I know to help you get better as well. So um, I thought what I would do here is do a complete edit of a photo from Iceland and try to get what I consider a pro result without using any of the pro tools. In other words, I just wanna use some of the basic filters and get the best photo out of it possible. And it may give you some ideas if you're an existing user and have been following me for a while and consider yourself fairly advanced, you might get some ideas here. Um, and if you're new to Luminar and it's newer to you, then hopefully this gives you some ideas and reduces any of that kind of wall or barrier that you might experience in learning a new product where you might say, gosh, I don't know, that seems kind of intimidating. So I'm just gonna jump into an edit and let me show you the photo. So here's the base photo, fairly blue, not really well lit, uh, you know, like a couple second exposure from Diamond Beach on the recent Luminar photo camp in Iceland which was amazing, I've said that 100 times. I'll say it 100 more, it was amazing. Um, but that was my base photo, and then after some editing, I got to there, and I consider that a pro result. I balanced the light, I added detail, I fixed the colors, I managed the contrast, and I did all of that without getting into the pro or advanced tools. Let me reset it, and we're gonna walk through that right now. Okay, so here is my base photo after using the light tool, which I'll talk in about a second. I do wanna pause for a second. The pro tools are over here on the pro tab. There are six tools here, right? Advanced contrast, adjustable gradient, dodge and burn, color enhancer, photo filter, and split toning. I use five of those on maybe every image. Uh, maybe not every image, but pretty darn close. I love these tools, they're amazing. I highly recommend as you continue to grow your skills in Luminar that you dive into those. I've got copious amounts of videos about them. Make good friends with these filters or tools. I may use that term interchangeably. It used to be called filters in old versions of Luminar, now they're called tools, I slip up. But these are amazing tools. I highly recommend getting to know them and learn how to use them. But my point was I wanted to go in and just use stuff on the Essentials tab and use that to show you that you can take what I consider the more basic tools, which does include some AI stuff, but uh, less complicated or involved tools and still get excellent results out of it. So that's what we're gonna do here. Uh, the first thing, now if you look at the base photo, very blue, so you can tell I did adjust the temperature and the tint a little bit. That's moving these two sliders here because it was way too blue. So basically I fixed the white balance. That's what that's all about. Added smart contrast. I bumped up the shadows because it was a little bit dark. And if you look, that's especially true in the foreground. I wanted to bring that up a little bit. And then in advanced settings, I bumped up the whites. And that's because even though it was blue like that, what I'm trying to do is a lot of the blue areas are uh, should be white, right? That would be like these waves, some of this iceberg, and some of this receding uh, coastal water, right? That's going back out to sea, so to speak. So. It's blue in the base photo. I'm trying to get it to more white, and that's why I did that. So now we're gonna hop into the next tool, which is AI Enhance. And as you can see here, I bumped up AI Accent, which is kind of like the easy button. Um, I bumped that up fairly uh, high, and AI Sky Enhancer as well, which acts a little bit like a polarizing filter. Um, the AI Accent is like a super easy button, one filter to kind of like get you started with if you like. 
but it does a lot of things to the photo. It increases color saturation. It changes contrast. Um, you know, it does a lot with the light, as you can tell. So let me turn this off. There's before and there's after. So if I didn't use Sky Enhancer, you can see, there we go, Sky's a little bit brighter. So I went to about, I think it was at 21 there. And that was really just to get a little bit more of that darkness back in the sky. This was basically a pre-sunrise shot. You can see the sunrise is starting to, um, you know, come up over the uh, over the horizon line there. But AI Enhance really got me a long way, I think. There's before and after. Okay, next I popped over to AI Structure, another amazing AI tool in Luminar. And what I did here was I went negative. So going left will actually soften up the detail and the sort of the crunch, for lack of a better word, and make it smoother. And I wanted to apply that to the sky. So what I did is I took it left to go negative for structure, and then I added a mask. So what I did is I took a gradient mask and I dropped it in. If you're not familiar with gradient masks, I got a video for you right there to check it out. But to show you the mask, I'm gonna click on the brush mask, click that icon, and you can see what I did. It basically just drops in, covers the sky almost entirely, and all that does is selectively add my negative structure into that part of the photo, which is the sky. I used a gradient mask because I'm basically looking at a, a flat horizon line and I'm just dropping it in straight. That's quicker and easier than using the brush to apply it. So that got me a, a nice smooth sky, which I just like. That's a personal preference. And that was it for this tool. And then I was on to color. Okay, with color, let me turn that on. I've got saturation and vibrance. I lifted both of them a little bit. And so I'm liking where I'm going with the photo, but I wanted to control the blues a little bit and add a little bit more pop of that warm sunrise light. So I went into advanced settings. These are just color um, channels, if you want to call it that, for each of those individual colors. So I went into the reds, bumped up the saturation, trying to get a little bit more of that sunrise glow. I did the same for the oranges and the yellows simply because there seems to be a mix of those colors in that light coming in, so I wanted to pump it up. So I dragged all three of those sliders, just the saturation slider, a little bit to the right. And then I went over here to blue, and I did the opposite. I took the saturation of the blue to the left. So let me show you that. There's before, a bit more blue and less warmth and definitely less um, intensity around the warm colors. And now, a little bit warmer overall scene because I've added uh, back a bit of that warmth and taken down the blue. So the color tool here gives you a whole lot of control over all the colors in your image. Okay, one thing I wanted to do is bring up a little bit of detail. So, however, I don't wanna bring it up everywhere. I just wanna bring it up in the uh, two chunks of ice, this iceberg here on the right and this other one here on the left. So I grabbed the medium details, went to 39, and then I just took a brush mask and I painted them in to these uh, little areas. So I could clean that up. You can always come in here and do more. There you go, I've added a little bit more, but that's basically a, a way to bump up the details selectively because I don't want to add details to the, the, the water that's moving. It's got a nice smooth look to it. I definitely don't want details in the sky or the waves. I just want those areas to be kind of a little bit of crispiness and the rest of the photo to be fairly smooth. Now that I've masked it in, I can also experiment with small details. And as I move that, you can kind of see that I'm getting a little bit more there. You could try large details as well. And a better way to tell is to zoom in and take a look at it. So there we go, zoomed in. Let me turn this off. And if you look at the iceberg here and the iceberg here, they're a little bit softer. And now they're just a little bit more crunch. And so when I zoom out, they just feel a little bit more real and a little bit more detailed. But once you create the mask, you can come in with any of the sliders uh, applying to that filter that you've used the mask for, or tool, not filter, um, and make adjustments. So I might come back in here and do a little bit of uh, massaging or maneuvering, but the bottom line is I wanted to bring up the detail on just those two selective areas of the photo, and that's how I did it. Now the other thing I wanna do is add a little bit more warmth overall to pop the scene. So I go into Landscape Enhancer, and I'll use Golden Hour for that. It's just a, it's a global filter. It's going across the whole photo is what I mean by that. And it just adds a nice bit of warmth across. So there's before and there's after. It's just a little bit of pop. And at this point, I, I thought I was kind of done with the photo. I was definitely done with this Essentials tab. Now, in my real edits, I would jump over to Pro and I would probably use Advanced Contrast. I would definitely use Adjustable Gradient. I might use Split Toning or Color Enhancer. I would even use Dodge and Burn. That's five of the six. 
but I'm not going to use them in this video because I want to show you that you can do a lot just using the basic uh, essentials tab, right? These filters or tools that sit on the essentials tab. However, I want to use them again. So the way to do that is to go create another layer. So I'm going to say add a new layer and I did that. I have an adjustment layer and I'm going to turn that on and I'm going to go over here. And once again, I went into the light tool and what I'm wanting to do here, you can see it's a fairly big change is adjust that foreground. So as you can tell, this little box here indicates I've got a mask. So once again, I made some adjustments here. I bumped up contrast, which is going to separate the whites and the blacks here in the foreground, which is exactly what I want to do because I want to add some brightness to that running water and make it stand out against the black sand beach. And so I'm creating contrast. So smart contrast helps me do that. I bumped up the highlights as well. And once again, I bumped up the whites. And so all I'm doing is trying to pop that part of the photo. And once again, I used a gradient mask. So I just dropped it in from the center of the frame, basically the horizon down. So once again, to show you the mask, I'll click on brush. You can see that's what the mask look like. looks like. I just took the gradient mask, added it to the bottom of the photo. And that gradient mask includes all of these changes that I made here. I also did a minor temperature and tint adjustment. Um, I can't turn that filter off. So the only way to show the before and after is to turn the layer off. And there's before. You can see it's quite a bit bluer and darker really. And after. Now it's got a quite a bit more uh, punch to it. And in fact, a little too much, but I'm going to fix that in a minute. Okay, now I'm finished with the light tool and I want to do one other thing here and that is going to landscape enhancer and I'm going to get dehaze. So if you take a look at that before and that after, it gives it a little bit of pop. It's fairly minor, but it's a little bit of kick and I kind of like that. But dehaze effectively, as the name implies, helps to remove atmospheric haze. And while there isn't a lot here, it does help create a little bit more contrast and a little bit more pop in the image. So one more time, here's before and now you see that here's after. It's not significant, but I liked it. And to show you the before and after of the photo, that's where we started. And all I've done is use tools on the Essentials tab. I didn't even get into the stuff I love. I love near and dear. Trust me, I love the tools on the Pro tab, but I'm, str I'm trying real hard here not to use them. And I'm not gonna use them in this video because that's not the point. Uh, or actually, that is the point, I guess, to not use them. Anyway, you know what I'm saying. But using just Essentials tab, and using it twice because I added another adjustment layer. I went from that to that. I have one other thing I liked about uh, that I wanted to do to this photo that is on the creative tab. So you pop over one and you get mystical and mystical adds a little bit of that romantic moodiness and a little bit of shadow to the photo. It also creates a little bit more contrast between the dark and the light, which is what contrast is, which I think helps pop some of the flowing water. So I added that. It's, it's obviously purely optional, as is really anything when you're editing your photos, because they're your photos. You should do whatever you want to do. Don't believe what anybody else says. Do whatever you want to do. Make yourself happy first. That's something I believe. I think that's important. But anyway, so in this case, I made myself happy by adding a little bit of mystical, even though it wasn't on the Essentials tab. So I deviated just a smidge for a little bit of romantic moodiness. But I think uh, Mystical and also on the other tab, the Portrait tab, you can get Orton Effect. Those are really good for adding a little bit of that romantic moodiness. But here's the thing. Now that I've done all that to this second layer or first additional layer, anyway, Adjustment Layer 1, um, I think it's a little too intense. I want to back it down. And there's a slider here that lets you do that, which is super fabulous. Adjustments Amount. So basically, I'm on this layer where I made all these extra adjustments. And I just want to tone it down a little bit overall. I just globally for this layer, I just want to say a little too much, Jim, let's back off. And so that's what the adjustments amount does. It's basically an, um, an amount or really an opacity slider for the changes made on that layer. So I'm going to back that down to around 60 and uh, 60 if I could hold my mouse the right place. And that gives me just enough, a little bit of oomph from this layer without overdoing it. So let me show you this layer now. That's before this layer and that's after. Now, if you compare that 60 with the 100, you can see at 100, I think it's too intense. It's a little too in your face. Um, it's a little bit over processed, but I think at 60, it looks pretty good. And so that's something to keep in mind. If you want to add incremental adjustments, 
and you're not sure how you're gonna like them, do those on an extra layer and then consider coming back and using the opacity or adjustments amount slider to sort of fine tune that or ratchet it back. Um, but I think it, at, at 60, it looks nice. I think it looks natural. And more importantly, I was able to take an image that was not really what I saw. I, I feel like what I saw, you know, it's kind of hard to remember these things, even though this is only a few weeks ago, but I feel like what I was witnessing was more like that because of course the dynamic range of our the human eye is a lot better than uh, even a, a 42 megapixel camera. Um, but um, the scene was definitely not that blue um, and it was brighter. Anyway, I wanted to get back to what I thought I saw or at the very least I want to get back to something that I think artistically appeals to my artistic sensibilities. Let's call it that. And this does. So there's the before, there's the after. The point here was really the Essentials tab is super powerful and you can get pro level results without diving into the pro tools. I'm not, I'm not saying this is a pro photo. I'm not saying this is better than everybody else's photo. I've seen countless photos from this location, even ones taken while I was standing next to the person on this trip uh, that blow, the, blow mine away. So I'm not saying, hey, look at my beautiful photo or I'm a pro. I don't mean that. I just mean you can get really good results without even getting into the more involved or advanced filters on the Pro tab. That's the beauty and the power of Luminar. That's why I like it so much. That's why I'm sitting here making videos and hanging out with you, my friends. Thanks for watching. I appreciate that. Give me a thumbs up if you like this kind of stuff. Give me a thumbs up if you'd like me to cover some more of the kind of the basic stuff. I don't want to call it beginner because um, I'll call it uh, new users, right? We're all beginners in a lot of ways, so I don't really like that term, but for the newer users, give me a thumbs up if you wanna see more videos around that kind of stuff that'll help you launch into your Luminar 4 editing with a little bit more confidence. I'll be back more, no, I'll be back soon with more, and I'll catch you here. So don't forget to uh, be awesome. Go have, uh, that's from some other YouTube channel. Don't forget to be awesome. I just like it. Anyway, don't forget to be awesome, and. I'll see you soon, my friends. Have a great day. Take care and adios.